Hey everyone, Tactics here, and with patch 10.0.5 releasing on live servers, we also saw the return of the Mage Tower Challenge. So in this video, I'll be giving you guys just a quick rundown of this challenge using the Dragonflight talents, discuss some of the mechanics that you'll face specific to the Tank Mage Tower, and hopefully help you unlock your shiny new transmog or even the Fell Werebear skin. As you can see, I am doing this challenge on my Guardian Druid, and if you're interested in the talents I used... Uh, uh, they're right here, and I'll post these down in the description as well for you to use. But basically, uh, I did kind of favor the double survival instincts charges just so you can use them on back to back annihilates in the second phase. I really also did want that incapacitating roar to help interrupt the horror ads. Uh, and then also, just you have some extra CC here with like Typhoon. And really, the big thing here is going deep into the Moonfire Talons, which really helps you push that first phase quite quickly especially compared to the version that was out in shadowlands uh which you'll see these kill times are much much faster than the shadowlands version uh but now let's just head into it here walking through the challenge uh so right off the top here of course uh you're gonna have to face inquisitor Varus, and basically you just want to keep up uh as a garden druid any dots you can but basically just dpsing him as any other tanks back as much as you can just watching this stacking debuff here which will reduce your max health you don't really want to interrupt mind rends because you will want to use those interrupts on drain life as you can see there otherwise these eyes will spawn around the room if they stare at you you just want to stare directly back while you're killing it if you aren't looking at them when they actually finish that cast you will get knocked back a decent distance and potentially off the platform so focus those eyes down guardians have a pretty easy time with this because they can just spam moonfire other tanks whatever ranged abilities you can uh, use them on those or something like a warrior for example you could charge over uh you know give it one shield slam or whatever to kill it uh, and then move back to whatever you're doing as you can see here, I got to five stacks of this Puddle debuff here, and then I'm just kind of waiting for it to expire before I do any more damage to him. And I'm just going to try and maintain my dots on Varus here, just for that consistent damage. These Nether Horror ads, they're going to spawn around the room here, uh, and basically you just want to make sure that they never get their cast off. Uh, they're going to begin to cast Nether Storm. I'm just going to in-cap roar it. In-cap roar will work for literally every single set of these guys because they spawn far enough apart for you to do that so the guardian has it pretty easy other tanks use whatever aoe cc you have available to you uh if you're a warrior for example specking into shockwave may not be a bad idea you could also kind of alternate things like uh a disrupting shout and intimidating shout for example uh though again you might end up losing coverage later on but that's just if you don't want to invest the capstone points again to shockwave but i think shockwave is definitely worth it for this challenge and if you ever run out of cc for these horrors you can use these orbs here to your advantage uh using them uh, will heal you to full health of course but they will also disorient all these other mobs uh, nearby so you can use that to stop those casts as well and the big thing is never let those casts go off they deal a ton of damage especially to your allies here if these mobs are on top of your allies so that's the number one thing here and this entire phase is basically just a balance of dealing damage to the inquisitor in a timely manner and as a guardian you're like i mentioned it's it's much easier with the moonfire build i'm just going in here till around five stacks i'm going to use my kick uh, eventually here i'm saving that four stack because i'll have to go up again to interrupt in a second there's drain life interrupt that it'll give me the five stacks and i'll finish killing the eyes the eyes tend to be the priority here just because you don't want to deal with like three eyes or two eyes even up at the same time if they spawn in different sides of the room so make sure you focus on eyes asap uh, and then here again as you can see i'm just kind of spamming moonfire on the infernal here from far away uh, they have that big knock back there if that hits you it's a giant knock uh, if you have some sort of displacement or anti-displacement effect, right, death advance, uh, any form of charge, that'll work. You can obviously charge back to any mob in range. You could death advance to not be knocked, that kind of thing. Bubble uh, works as well. Uh, but otherwise, I'm just going to try and kill it. Uh, they aren't, they never permanently die, so these will always just die and then respawn. As you can see, like you can see the body there, that's exactly where it'll respawn. Uh, so it will come back, and you're going to see I'm kind of going to slow DPS here. Uh, a little bit just so i can actually manage that because i kind of want to push into the second phase here right after a spawn of the nether horrors and killing an infernal so you're going to see here i've actually stopped hitting varus uh, entirely these nether horrors are coming out i interrupt the uh, thing hit the eyeball then i'm killing these nether horrors as they come in i'm going to stop their cast the infernal has resurrected now the cast has been stopped and I'm just going to kind of strafe away from the Infernal to dodge that smash there on the ground. I'm killing this Infernal. And this is where I kind of want to push the phase as I kill the Infernal and as I kill Varus there. So that's the phase push. And this is where I'm popping all my cooldowns. So you saw there, solved my puzzle box. 
Uh, I'm popping in Karn. I'm going to pop a Heart of the Wild here for the Arcane damage increase. All my cooldowns are going off here. And then I'm moving slightly away from the inside to avoid these beams. Kind of staying around this area. I cheat a little bit towards the insides because I debate using one of these puddle or the one of the orbs here. Uh, but I realize I don't really need it right now. You can save those for like an oh shit moment in this phase. Uh, if you like ever, oh, a cast is about to go off. I really need one. I really need to heal to recover from an annihilate, whatever it is. Speaking of the annihilates, these do ramp up over the course of this fight. Uh, so as you see there, I was just in Incarn with a little bark skin up. I still have my two charges of survival instincts for uh, either the next two or the next one, for example. Uh, you could uh, get away with some other cooldowns as well uh, if you have them available to you. So keep that in mind. It's going to depend on how many Annihilates you have. As you can see, the Annihilates are about 25-ish seconds apart. So keep that in mind. Uh, twist Reflection, number one thing you need to kick in this phase. If it does go off, it will be cleared uh, if you touch on one of these orbs. Uh, so in case you do miss it, you can do that. I think also Warriors can Spell Reflect it, so keep that in mind. Uh, but otherwise, we're just kind of... Staying towards the edges of the room here. Try and keep the center a little clear. Uh, Nether Horrors, you're still going to have to balance those. And you're going to have to dodge these beams, which do kind of push you back a little bit. You can see here, I'm just kind of dodging to the side. Using my in-cap roar to stop those horrors. And moving outside of those beams. And just kind of staying to the outside of the room here. And because I killed that Infernal on the phase transition, you just have so much time. Now it's spawning. We had the second Annihilate go off. And now I can just kind of spam Moonfire on this infernal and rotate around the room avoiding its frontal but still mostly pumping damage into cruel just kind of using it as an extra target here uh, and now again i'm able to for this next annihilate i could have probably saved uh i, I like a bark skin and a uh rage of the sleeper and and you've been able to use survival instincts on the fourth one if i got a fourth one i'm gonna kill them before the fourth one so i can just use my second charge of survival instincts but if you were to get a fourth one for example uh, you could just do that for the third one a bark plus a rage and then you could do survival uh for the last one there and you see i did step on uh the little orb here i had a bunch of nether horrors had an infernal going good time to just use it heal up finish off those moms don't need to worry about getting knocked off the edge of the platform and then here I can just finish off rule relatively easier. And I will say, I do think this challenge is now easier in Dragonflight than it was in Shadowlands, at least for Guardian Druids in particular. Anyways, there it is, guys. My tank mage tower guide for patch 10.0.5. Hopefully it does help you out. And if it did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like it. I also like to be, give a big shout out here to Gorebreaker and all of my other supporters over on my Patreon. If you want to support me further, I definitely recommend checking that out as you can also grab some pretty cool perks, uh, including things like a personal shout out right here at the end of every YouTube video. I do coaching as well. And then also some, some neat things on my brand new community Discord. So I'll leave that link in the description if you want to check it out. Otherwise, just be sure to check out my stream over on Twitch at Tactics where I do all things tank related. And I'll see you guys in the next video.